mm, 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 mm. These Real Housewives of Atlanta. A mess, a mess, a mess. It's 2020. And some women are still fighting tooth and nail to hold on to a piece of man. Lord have mercy and help us all. Greetings, Royal Family. Thanks for clicking on the video. Welcome back to the channel. So we're on episode two of season 13 of These Real Housewives of Atlanta, and we are introduced to the new cast member, friend of the show, LaToya, and peace holder, Drew Sedora. So, oh my God, I'm going to try to stay on task because I got my notes, but I have so much to say. So the episode opens up. We see Kenya in a cute maxi dress with a leaf blower. Okay, I don't know why that made me laugh. Like, girl, what are you doing? But I respect it. She's a homeowner, and she had company coming over. She wanted to keep her backyard nice and neat. So Cynthia arrives to Kenya's place, and she seems a bit concerned that Kenya, you know, just met LaToya, and she already invited her over to her home. So, yeah, Kenya seems so smitten over LaToya, right? I know a lot of people weren't feeling LaToya. I did check out some Twitter comments before I even watched the episode. Some people are ready for LaToya to go as quick as she came. So LaToya, she arrives, and I wonder, is she Cynthia's replacement? Hmm. So Kenya, she's so refreshed by Miss LaToya. She said that she's so refreshing and she loves her. LaToya says that, you know, she's getting ready to be separated from her husband. They're sitting outside having drinks. They're hot and sweating. Why didn't they just go in the house? Whatever. They wanted to sit outside and they're having drinks. And Kenya, she brings up Mark after LaToya was talking about, you know, separating from her husband. Blah, blah, blah. We already know it's repetitive. Now, do you think that Kenya likes LaToya because she can kind of turn up with her being that they're leading us viewers to believe that they're in similar situations? I thought about that. Then I was like, hmm. I don't know. Cynthia, she seems like like the odd woman out because, you know, she's on her way down the aisle. So is there going to be a disconnect with Kenya and Cynthia? That's what it looks like it's going to me. Anyway, moving along, Portia. So she is FaceTiming her mom and her sister. Um, Portia's sister, mother, and baby PJ are at Portia's house. So um, she's just expressing, Portia that is, you know, how she felt getting arrested and her protest journey. You know, Portia is very, very lucky that she has her mom and sister who are caring for baby PJ in, uh, in Portia's absence. Very, very lucky. And she did express that. You know, she said that she's just going to give her mother, her sister, her baby a big hug and a kiss. And she just talked about how she felt about the whole time that she was in Kentucky. So... I kind of like the way that they're directing Portia's storyline so far. I, I really do. So I'm here for it. Good for you, Portia. Good for you. So we shift gears to see Drew and Cynthia, Drew Sedora. So they're out, you know, having dinner. And we find out that Eva was the one that introduced them. And, you know, they've kind of been hanging out ever since. So Cynthia's kind of filling Drew in on some of the girls. Um, Drew Sedora, she's like continuing her acting career. And she says she may want to dabble in music as well. So Drew Sedora, she was in the the game. That was a show on uh, BET with Tia Mori and um, dang Tasha. I can't remember her darn name, or Tasha Mack. I can't remember her name in real life. Anyway, and Drew Sedora was also in the uh, TLC biopic. Uh, I do remember her from an episode of Girlfriends when Lynn was gonna be in that girl group. And um, she did some flashback photos of when she was acting since she was young. So she, she's been in show business for a, line, uh, a while, I mean. So uh, Drew Story, she's married to Ralph. Is that his name? Ralph, correct me if I'm wrong in the comments. Um, and we see him in the next scene, you know, coming in with flowers along with Drew's mother. Um, and they're singing and they're wishing her a happy six year marriage anniversary. They do have children together and Drew's mother is staying with them because she did have foot surgery. So Drew's mother came to help out with the kids, yada, yada. And she's a pastor. Okay. I, I say that for a reason. Now I can tell you right off the bat, I take notes as I'm writing, as I'm watching the episode, right? Drew's mother is too involved in, in her daughter's marriage. I could tell you right off the bat, and that is a rep, recipe for disaster. Like, the way she was talking is as if she's taken over. And because she's the elder and because she's Drew's mother and she's a Christian woman, she's a pastor, 
you know, y'all must listen to me. I didn't like that energy at all. I'm, I'm keeping it real. I didn't like it. Anyway, we shift gears. We see Candy. Um, and I do think that we're going to be seeing a lot of Mama Joyce this season, more this season than last season. And I said, let us pray. Did you guys catch when Mama Joyce <laughs> referred to Rona as covert? Covert 19. I thought that was funny. So they're on their way to Riley's high school graduation and only two guests per grad are allowed at the, the ceremony. So, you know, Mama Joyce <laughs> wasn't sitting this one out. So congratulations, though, to Miss Riley. She's going to be attending NYU. Shout out to you, girl. All right. Back to Portia. So Portia is free at last, free at last. Thank God almighty. Portia is free at last and she's home. So here, here's my question. It's just a question. Just a question. Do you think that Portia should have been home more with her baby um, instead of repeatedly leaving town to advocate? Um, because she left quite a bit, if I'm not mistaken. She was gone for, for some time. She was back and forth. Even though, yes, she has her mother. She has her sister helping her with baby PJ. And her mother doesn't mind, um, which is a good thing. But what do you what do you think about her spending so much time away from her child, like going back and forth. Again, no judgment, it's just a question. So Portia, she said that, you know, um, Dennis was also in Kentucky with her being supportive. And I thought that was interesting. So both of PJ's parents were out of town. Speaking of Dennis, Portia, she's basically tired of him and she seems like she wants out. That's the long and short of it, you know? I don't know if they're gonna be going to counseling again this season, but she, she wants out. Shifting gears back to Cynthia. So Latoya and Kenya, they arrive at Lake Bailey together. Okay. Marlo then arrives, um, you know, with her face shield. Now Kenya's confessional <laughs> in Kenya's confessional, she said that Marlo has fallen off, you know, just judging her looks and stuff like that. And I was just like, girl, Kenya, knock it off. So Latoya, they're talking and sitting around talking. And for whatever reason, uh, Latoya, she mentions her first sugar daddy buying her a car. And Marlo, she makes a joke saying like, oh, what's a, what's a sugar daddy? And of course, Kenya runs with it and takes a jab at Marlo about it. You know, Marlo was playing dumb, acting like she didn't know what a sugar daddy is. Marlo, girl, are you, girl, knock it off, Marlo, knock it off. Anyway, back to Candy. So Candy, they're all in the kitchen after Riley's graduation and Candy's looking at her daughter's high school diploma and she's getting emotional and Candy's so proud of her baby Riley. Now Todd reached into his pocket and he hands Riley money, $2,000 to be exact. Shout out to the purple band, okay? I peeped that and I said, I even, I said, let me rewind this. And I said, wow. It's kind of like, do I even really need to explain why I'm saying wow? Todd. Riley's stepfather reaches into his pocket with no hesitation and gladly hands his stepdaughter $2,000 in cash money. I, he probably did that to impress Mama Joyce because Mama Joyce was in that kitchen. I don't know. And, and what I automatically thought about is I wonder how his daughter, Todd's daughter, is going to feel seeing that. Cause you know how he felt about not giving uh, his daughter any handouts, not giving her any money. I wonder when she sees that, how she's going to feel, you know, that's the first thing that came to my mind other than the fact that he just handed her $2,000 in cash. Anyway, Riley, in my opinion, she seems like she's ready to, to get away from all of them. Mama Joyce included. She just seemed like she is red to go. All right. So back to Lake Bailey. Okay. So Drew arrives with her husband. And Kenya is not excited. So I said, here we go. Kenya found her next, her next victim. Now in true Kenya fashion, she's rude. And she thinks, but she thinks that Drew's uh, husband is cute. <laughs> what is, <laughs> Kenya, Kenya ain't got no class, man. She ain't got no class. Ugh. Latoya doesn't like Drew and she couldn't fake, you know, any type of class whatsoever while she was in Cynthia's home and she was yelling that she wanted more wine. She was irritated. She was cutting Drew off when Drew was talking. Then it dawned on me. I said, that's probably why Kenya likes Latoya so much, you know, among other reasons, they both don't really care for Drew. So I guess they stay, they probably had this alliance behind the scenes. Like, yeah, we're going to come at Drew and we're going to team up. Sounds crazy, but Kenya has to maintain her spot on that show. So she's going to do what she has to do. So look, Toya, she's tried to be funny, and I can't stand to try to be funny 
bleep. <laughs> okay. So she claims that she doesn't like Drew because of her role on the game. And then she just tried to make it a joke. See, I, like I said, I don't like that. Try to be funny ish. I, I, I don't, I don't like it. So Marlo, she was in the kitchen with Latoya. She ends up shading Kenya while she was speaking to Latoya, a mess talking about don't tell Kenya your business. Cause she'll use it against you. Marlo ain't lying though. But does Marlo know Latoya like that? Like, you don't even really know her. So are you really looking out for her or what? Are you trying to create something? Because you know Latoya is probably going to go back and tell Kenya that. And then it's going to be static. So what was the purpose of that? Anyway, then Marlo says, you know, and she can't keep a man if Jesus bought one for her or Jesus brought or something like that. Marlo, I'm disappointed. I am, but I'm not. Because you take jabs at Kenya about not having a man and talking to other people's husbands and things like that. So I guess it's on trend for the show, but I'm that whole, Oh, she can't keep a man. So if she could keep a man, what would that mean? She'd be some superior being. See this, is why Drew Sidora probably in the situation she in because she got to keep a man. I know one probably doesn't have anything to do with the other, but stay with me here. People stay with me, but I, I wasn't really feeling that, but I wasn't surprised that Marlo said that her and Kenya Kenya and Marlo exchanged jabs back and forth, but it just, something about it just turned me off. You know what I mean? Like I, I'm so sick. Oh, she ain't got no man. As if that means that you're some failure in life. Like I'm not even gonna, I'm not even gonna go there. You, you feel how you feel. Do you? So Mike and, um, Drew's husband, they're outside and they're talking. They're sitting by Lake Bailey, you know, having a nice chit chat. And Drew's husband is pretty much ready to get out, just like he said. Now, I saw people criticizing him on Twitter, right, before I watched this episode. Um, he was getting chewed out because he went out of town after his wife had foot surgery. So he went out of town for like two or three days and didn't let Drew know where he was or where he was going. Now, again, this is before I watched the show. Now, I said to myself after watching the show, ain't that why she had her mama there and allowed her mama to kind of run her household? Now, I'm not making excuses for Ralph. Relax, because I know you're probably ready to type in the comments something crazy. No, no, no. I'm not making excuses. I'm just saying. Like, what makes you think that he would want to stay in that environment where his mother-in-law is dictating how his household runs? Now, we may not have seen that in this episode, but no one can convince me that Drew's mother does not act like she's the man of that house. No one can convince me. Okay. Um, in the first few minutes of Drew's mom being on the screen. And when I heard her talk, I, I already knew what it was just the way she was talking anyway. So Drew and her husband, they have issues basically. And her overbearing, you know, mama added to that. It's just a no. It's just all bad. It's just all bad. You know, even her mother, like I said, entering the room singing happy anniversary with the husband. I thought that was weird. Like, why couldn't he come in with the flowers? And, you know, you just let them have their time. You was all in the middle of that. Like, like I said, Drew's mom is the man of that house. Anyhow, back to Cynthia. So they're tasting wine, you know, out back. And the ladies are chit-chatting. And Latoya, she's being a mess. Latoya is the same Latoya on her YouTube platform that she is on this show. I know a lot of people were saying that she was doing too much. I saw these Twitter comments. She needs to go. That is exactly how she is on her YouTube channel. Okay. In her early part of her career, cause I used to follow her way before she had kids and, uh, before she, she met her husband and she was a she was a she was toned down on Real Housewives of Atlanta on this episode. She used to be like, you know, she's an entertainer. I guess she considers herself a comedian, just high energy. So Latoya is just <laughs> she's just being a mess. So she's telling Kenya, you know, that she can mess with other men while she's separated. Drew, she doesn't agree. And I'm like, Miss Drew, you know, you 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 got your own front door to sweep in front of. But of course this was prior to the dinner scene with her husband, but I was just like, mm. so she said that her husband left for three days. She, she was very transparent with the ladies. Um, and they had an argument and I'm just like, I would really love to know the whole story. Like I said, I'm not making excuses for Ralph at all because he's, he's a piece of work. He is really something else. So Kenya, she excuses herself as does Cynthia and then what happened? They went into the kitchen to chit chat. Now, Kenya, God, 
Kenya takes this time to tell Cynthia that she's going to file a custody action before she files for divorce. So I just, <laughs> this is, so during Cynthia's nice event, you needed to tell her this at that moment. Why? At that moment. Bye, Kenya. You, you, you just got to make it about you. Anyway, so Kenya and LaToya, they're getting ready to head out. Um, Marlo, she tried to embrace Kenya, which I thought was kind of phony. And she was basically met with like a, a resistance. And it was kind of embarrassing. Um, but Kenya, don't fool with you like that. You was just talking about her in the kitchen. Marlo, I don't know what you're trying to do here, but yeah, she, yeah, you, you kind of embarrassed yourself. So back at Drew's house. Now, Ralph, he set up a cute dinner at home. Private chef for the evening, rose petals on the table, balloons, nice and romantic, music playing. So Ralph says, you know, he says a prayer before they pop open their bottle of champagne. And then things went left. So Drew, she wants a wedding in celebration of their seven years of marriage. Now, mind you, they're celebrating six years at this moment. So she's thinking about next year. So he asked her for whatever reason to tell him what she feels is and is not working in their marriage. Bad idea because she did not hesitate to tell him. Now, mind you, you have this romantic dinner. <laughs> Why would you decide to do de that's something for a counseling session? No. Why would you decide to, to, to ask her that to me? He's, he's very calculated. You know what I mean? He's very, very calculated. And I think that he intentionally asked those questions or asked that question because he knew it was going to, set Drew off, set him off so that I guess more tension can be created so he can play the victim, which he tried to do in this scene. And it was so pathetic. Oh my gosh. So pathetic. Right. Um, so she brought up him leaving, you know, for a few days without telling her and he effed up because he made terrible excuses. He, he talked about being a black man, having the weight of the world on his shoulders, I was like, wait, 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 wait. What does that have to do with you leaving and not letting your wife know where you were going, why you were leaving, where you were while you were gone? Not a text, not a, not a phone call, not a pigeon with a note attached, nothing. And then you're talking about the weight of the world on your shoulders as a, as a black man, bro, cut it out. I, I just felt that they're both less than smart, put it that way. So he got ex extremely defensive. And again, I think he planned this. This was so calculated the way that he was arguing and the way that he was talking and the things that he was saying. It's almost as if he planned this so that maybe they could get into a big argument and then he can leave for another three days. It just seemed real juvenile and weird. So he got defensive, you know, of course, because he's guilty. Um, and she's silly because she knows where he was, maybe not technically, but she knows that he was not you know, doing what he was supposed to do. You know what I mean? So I feel like she ain't planning on leaving him. So why is this being discussed ex exactly? You, they've been married for six years. And I highly doubt that he woke up two weeks prior to them having dinner and celebrating their six year anniversary and, and was a completely different person. I'm just saying, you hear the whispers, you see the traits, you see the behaviors, not to mention she admitted not really knowing him very long before they got engaged and married. I think there was a six month increments. So there's that on that. Um, and again, she's not planning on leaving. So, I mean, God. listen, they did not waste any time laying out their dysfunction for all to see. And I was like, sheesh, we just, we just met y'all good grief. But it was the most interesting part of the show. And I'm just like, Drew girl, mm. Then she brings up her mom being around, seeing all this, you know, when she thought he was downstairs in his office and she knocked on the door, she realized that he wasn't there. Again, she brings up her mother. My mother is seeing this. See, that's the problem. Your mama don't need to be all in your business. If she's going to be there helping you while you're recovering and he's supposed to be out working, helping you with the kids, mama can have a discussion with you about certain things because you're her daughter. But getting in the middle of the two of y'all, I just, I just, I don't think that's a good idea. I really don't. So he tells her that he went to Tampa. She was like, where did you go? You know, she's grilling him. So he's like, what difference is it going to make? I agreed with him on that. That's the only thing I agreed with him about. What difference is it going to make now? Like you, you still here, right? Celebrating your six year anniversary, right? Oh God. So he says, I went to Tampa. So I'm saying to myself, okay, now what? 
Like, you really think he's telling the truth? You obviously feel that he's a liar, right? Because of the way that you're grilling him. You know he's not telling you the truth. So he's like, I went to the beach, you know. Uh, so, of course, she's like, you know, that doesn't make any sense. Of course, you know he's going to lie. Then we find out that Ralph put cameras in the house and microphones in the house, and she didn't know. She said she went through his phone, and she saw a picture in his phone of her sleeping and her mom sitting on the couch or something like that. He, he said, no, no, no. No such thing transpired. I don't have any pictures in my phone. So did she put something on the phone proving, I guess, that there was pictures? So she knew he was lying. So it seems like he probably watches them while he's away playing. Drew, you know this already. Y you know this. What you going to do about it? I'm just saying. Then, then Ralph, he lets off. He goes in on her. He calls Drew foolish. He tells her to get her head out of the clouds. They're yelling. You know, she catches him in his lie. She gets up. She gets emotional and she goes, I guess, into a, the bathroom or in the room and you can hear her saying, I'm done. I'm not doing this. And she's crying and emotional. And he has a look of satisfaction on his face. See, Drew, this man is playing a game that I don't think you have the instruction manuals to. Um, and I think the two of them, this is bad. Like what? Here's my question. What is it about him that kept you in this marriage for six years? And you already talking about you want a wedding or a renewal of vows of sorts for the seventh year. W what's keeping you there, girl? And please, I don't want to hear. Oh, I love him. Girl, 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 girl. So that look of satisfaction on his face said to me, mm -hmm, I got to right where I want her. I know exactly what to do. Oh, Drew, um, not saying that she shouldn't be emotional, but girl, he, he got, he knows how to play you like a fiddle. And I don't know what you're caught up in. Maybe you're caught up in hanging on to a man and his money. You know, your mama's a, a pastor. So maybe divorce is shunned in the black church or in your, you know, family. Who knows? It could be a plethora of things, but girl, Ooh, he got you, he got you figured out. He got you all figured out. And again, six years of marriage. What is it that has kept you in that marriage for six years? This is one episode, maybe a, a what, 10 minute scene? And girl, and don't blame it on editing either. What the heck kept you for six years? Why are you staying? Why is he staying? He talks about he wants to get out and he's so, he just wants to be free. Now, granted, I can understand you jumping in your ride and saying, look, man, I, I got to clear my head. I just want to go away for a few days. That might not be acceptable to some either, but because it's a lot going on in their house, but no contact whatsoever. Eh, okay. But Drew, it seems like you already know, like you want him to admit that what he's doing something that he's not supposed to be doing. Why? for you to hang it over his head and still stay and be miserable and make everybody miserable, make yourself miserable. You ain't going to do nothing. He disappeared for three days and was not in any rush to contact you or even admit to where he was. And you are celebrating your six year anniversary. So what good did it do for him to reveal this to you? I, this will be interesting to see how this, um, how this plays out. Um, but, Ralph, yeah, Ralph is a um Ralph is a whole lot of things. And I don't I don't really have anything too nice to say. So I'm not gonna say anything at all. But Drew girl, I, I would love to know what kept you for six years. And let me tell you something right now. If Kenya Moore opens her beak to criticize or say anything about Drew's marriage, six year marriage, as dysfunctional as it is, I am going to I am not sparing Kenya season thirteen. And Team Twirl, y'all just going to have to be mad about it. That's all I got. Ain't got no more. I'm out of here, y'all. I'll see y'all next week. Until next time, folks. Peace.